we don't realize all of the noise that surrounds us. We live in such a noisy world. From the moment we wake up, we're hearing noise. The first noise, your alarm clock. <laughs> and if that doesn't wake you up, I promise the second noise, it will. It's your kids busting in through your bedroom door, jumping on your bed, and screaming at the top of their lungs, Mommy, wake The sun is up, so it's time to wake Does this sound familiar, moms, or is it just me? <laughs> then you roll out of bed, pick up your phone, and you know, you start scrolling through all of your social media noise. All of this noise puts a lot of stress on your body. Trust me, I get it. And that's why today, before I go into my message on the importance of mindfulness for busy moms like you, I want to get you relaxed. Because all of that noise that you encountered before your day even started might make you feel tense, anxious, nervous. And that's okay. That's normal. So right now, what I'd like you to do is to relax. Sit in your chair if you're not already, or sit on the floor and allow your bottom to get heavy in your chair. And if it's comfortable for you, I encourage you to close your eyes, or you can look down at the floor at something that's not moving. Good. And I ask that you put one hand on your heart and maybe even go under your shirt to feel the warmth of your skin and your heart beating. And then another hand on your belly. And if you wanna go under your shirt and feel your belly. And we're gonna pay attention to our breath. I want you to take a deep belly breath in through your nose. and out through your mouth. Dropping your shoulders. You are safe. You are safe. Let's do that again. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. One more. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. Good. Gently open your eyes, noticing how you feel now and not attaching any judgment. Maybe you feel good or maybe you still don't feel the best. And both of those are perfect. So according to Merriam-Webster, mindfulness is the practice of maintaining a non-judgmental state of heightened or complete awareness of one's thoughts, or, or emotions of experiences on a moment to moment basis. But can we be real for a moment? Like, I think we're friends now. I'm gonna consider you my friend, okay? <laughs> Mindfulness can be extremely challenging, especially if you're a busy mom and you're a wife, an entrepreneur, a friend, a sister, the list goes on and on of all of the responsibilities that we have. So if right now you're like, Leslie, I've heard of mindfulness, but it's not for me. What if I told you that mindfulness is exactly for you and it has the potential to transform your life? There are two ways that you can practice mindfulness. The first is meditation, which you just did it. We meditated together. And the second is yoga. So a little story time. I fell in love with the yoga practice back in 2009. I had just graduated high school and it was the summer before I started my freshman year in college. So I had nothing but time, everyone, meaning I had no job. I still lived at home with my parents. What a time to be alive. Sometimes I wish I could go back, but we're here now in the present. So when my best friend Kelly asked, hey, Lizleen, do you want to take a yoga class with me? 
I said, sure, why not? I have nothing but time. I like to put here in my story that this was in 2009 right before social media really like took off. We were in the MySpace days still, okay? So I say that because I didn't have any images of what yoga was supposed to look like, okay? So I was walking into this class with my friend blind. (laughs) I went to that class and I walked out of that class after an hour later, transformed. I just felt so good. And as I reflect on that moment, that first yoga class that I took and the feelings that I had after, the feelings I had were just a sense of control, a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose. At that time, I couldn't articulate all of that, but I knew I felt good and I knew I needed to keep going back to get that same feeling. So I did. I got a membership. And I went to that yoga studio every single day of summer 2009. Fast forward to fall 2009, I became a freshman of college. I started working a part-time job. And unfortunately, my yoga practice, it fell on the back burner. Fast forward again to 2016, I got married. Yay! We were thrilled. I got married to my husband, Jamie, and you know, we did what newlyweds do and started having sex and I got pregnant. We were thrilled, everyone. And when I say we were thrilled, I mean, we told everyone. And we even did a dinner party for both of our parents, invited them to our home. I bought cute little onesies that said, you're going to be grandparents. We were excited. But as quick as I found out that I was pregnant was as quick as I miscarried. Within six weeks of being pregnant, I lost my first baby. To say I was devastated is an understatement. Up until that moment in my life, I had checked all of the boxes, right? Got married, I became a nurse, I did all of the things. But this, I couldn't check. And you know what's really really wild is, up until that moment, I didn't want to be a mom. I was never a woman or a little girl that was like, I played with Barbies and I wanted to be a mom. That wasn't me. But now that I had lost my first baby, I was like, I I want this. And I wanted it so bad. I remember thinking I wanted it so bad. And I just remember feeling so disappointed in myself, so sad. I had a lot of shame. I didn't tell anybody. Obviously, my husband and my the, my family had to know, but I didn't tell my friends because I was afraid they were going to judge me. I didn't know anybody like in my personal circle that had miscarried. So why am I going to share that? So after, you know, being quiet for some time, I, I, I was like, you know, I need to like read some books or listen to some podcasts, kind of find some kind of community. And there was one podcast I listened to in particular by the name of The Read. And I remember one day Crystal said, everyone needs therapy. And her saying that, like, it just struck something. Like, I felt like she was talking right to me. I immediately picked up my phone and I booked a therapist and I started working with her for about three, three to six months. And she helped me identify and understand all of my emotions at that time. And within that time, I fortunately got pregnant again. And this time it was yay, question mark, because, you know, me and my husband were afraid that the same thing was going to happen, but it didn't. July 31st, 2018, I had my son Lennox. Fast forward to um, nine months later, I found out I was pregnant again. (laughs) But this time it was, yay, I'm tired. And I like to put in here, ladies, that birth, uh, breastfeeding is not a form of contraception. You live and you learn, right? So anyways, December 8th, 2019, we had my daughter, Violet. So we're at the end of 2019 now, and we are, have two kids under the age of two. We're going to fast forward again to March 2020. We all know what happens. The entire world shuts down, right? And me and my husband are now locked in this house with both of our kids. 
I was supposed to go back to work and because I just finished my maternity leave March 2020, but I didn't want to go back to work. As you can relate, I was terrified. I had babies. I didn't know what was going on outside of these four walls of my home. I was staying home. Fortunately, my supervisor said I could work from home. And in that moment, just in that little moment, I was like, oh my God, this is great. I can work from home. I could be super mom wrong. We all know. We all know how that went, right? It was not super mom. It was very stressful. And I was working from home and so was my husband. So when he was working upstairs, I was caring for the kids. And when I was uh, working upstairs, he was caring for the kids. There was no downtime in 2020 for us. And because of that, we didn't have any time to decompress, just, re you know, relax. And there was one day in particular with my daughter, Violet, she was about six months at the time and she was colicky. She had a lot of gas. And I remember her crying nonstop, no matter what we did, the gas drops, moving the legs, you know how it goes. You move the little legs, hoping to move the, the gas bubbles, try to rock her, nothing worked. She just wouldn't stop crying. And I remember in that moment, I snapped. And I started to have thoughts of, of, of wanting to harm myself. And I was like, you know what? they would be better off without me. I just, I just want to end my life. This is too much. But the next thought that I had scared the shit out of me. And it was thoughts of wanting to harm my daughter. And I remember in that moment, it was like there was two Leslie's, one, two. And I kind of jumped out of my body and I looked at her and I said, you can't think like that. And you can't tell anybody you just thought that. So I ran upstairs, told my husband, I said, hey, I need to take a breather. I didn't disclose to him that I had these thoughts because I didn't want him to judge me. I, I didn't want any of that pressure. So I just said, I need a breather. I went outside, took a walk, and I intuitively came back to my yoga practice through way of deep breathing. So I started breathing in through my nose and out through my mouth. I kept doing that, just coming back to it. And I got a little level headed and came back inside. And as soon as I came back inside, I picked up my phone again and I immediately booked another therapist. Yes, I did have a therapist back in 2017 after my miscarriage, but it was a new time in my life. I was a new mom now. We were in a pandemic. There was a lot of things going on. I needed a fresh set of eyes on me. And I like to put here in the story, I went on to, I went to therapyforblackgirls.com and I found five therapists. One called me back and she called me back within 20 minutes, actually. And it, it was like, she could hear in my voice that I needed help like yesterday. I saw her within a week and I started working with her and it was amazing. I got to identify and understand my emotions as a new mom now. It was wonderful, but I needed more. I felt this intuitive nudge, a pull, if you will, that I needed more. I deserved more. There was power within me that I needed to unlock. So I got this idea that I needed a life coach. Mind you, I had never heard of a life coach, okay? But I just, I needed, I needed something more in tandem with my therapist. So I invested in a life coach and I started working with both of these women, my therapist and my life coach simultaneously. Working with both of these women transformed my life and catapulted me. I was achieving all of my goals, goals that I didn't even think were possible. What most women would achieve in, say, like five years, I was achieving in just one. Achieving all these goals got me so excited and inspired, inspired to serve moms like me. So if today you feel like, Leslene, are you talking to me? It's because I am. I am talking to you. And if you've ever had those thoughts of, I didn't want to be a mom. Why didn't anybody tell me that it was this hard? I want you to know that I feel you and I see you because I was you. And I want you to know that I am here for you. So I'd like to close out this message 
the same way that I opened it, which is with our meditation. So get comfortable in your chair again. You're a pro now, you're a yogi and allow your seat to get heavy. And if you close your eyes, if you will, or you can just look down at the floor, settle into your body. Put one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly. We're gonna take three deep belly breaths. Here we go, in through our nose. And out through our mouth. In through our nose. Out through our mouth. In through our nose. Out through our mouth. Gently open your eyes, noticing the noise has dissipated now. Thank you for your time. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.